I know you guys are sick of all the puns, so you're gonna get nothing out of me. Okay, silliness aside, I never thought I'd be making a video defending the Nothing One and Carl Pei, not even in a million years, but here we are. And obviously not because they need me to, but the last couple of weeks have shown us the ugliest, most toxic side of the tech community. Like the phone triggered some people to the point of madness. Fanboys from every brand are clutching their pearls and coming up with the most absurd of reasons to hate on the phone. And the voices of reason are too few or muffled. So why am I doing this? Because frankly, I don't want another phone brand that's trying to do something different, even if slightly, to die. The market definitely needs more brands that are willing to try something new. And let me make something clear. I don't have the phone one and neither am I planning to get one. As an overall package, some aspects of it definitely are appealing to me and others aren't. And it's definitely starting to grow on me in black. But I respect the vision behind it and what it's trying to do. So I'm not here to discuss the technical merits and whether the camera is good or not or how many hours of battery life you can expect, but more the reasons behind some of these specs. So let's start by addressing all of the absurdities one at a time. The most controversial aspect is definitely the chipset. So what the tech community is essentially saying is it doesn't matter about the build quality, the screen, battery life, the user experience, the software, the effort, innovation, or anything at all in determining the price, but because it has a mid-range chipset, it's automatically overpriced. Do I even need to explain why this is just crazy? And just because another brand that focuses on offering value for money and basically giving you the highest level of performance for the money, does this for even less money than the Nothing One, doesn't automatically mean that the Nothing Phone One is overpriced. This phone still has a lot of elements that it shares with more premium devices, such as the materials, build quality, symmetrical bezels, fairly long software support, and a clean software experience. A slightly more rational argument is that maybe Nothing could have used a different chipset, like the Snapdragon 870, for example. But that chipset is older, meaning that it's gonna be harder to get updates for it in the long run. It's also a more power-hungry processor, which means that for a bit of extra performance in a task such as gaming, you're also sacrificing battery life. And in my opinion, if you're trying to create a phone that will please everybody, battery life is a much more important metric over gaming. But this obsession with more power brings us to a very important point. Just because your favorite brand makes terribly unoptimized software filled with bloatware that requires top-of-the-line hardware to run smoothly, doesn't mean that the Snapdragon 778 Plus is a weak or slow or underpowered chipset. Honestly, the tech community's world perspective about performance is just so wildly distorted. The second point is that nothing is using an ODM, therefore the Phone 1 is generic and cheap. Let's get this straight. You think the Nothing Phone 1 is overpriced, but you also want them to create everything from scratch as a tech startup and offer a competitive price? Wanna know who else is using ODM services for different devices? Samsung, Nokia Mobile, Oppo, Huawei, previously LG, Xiaomi, Motorola, and so on. But for Nothing to use an ODM as a startup? Of course, that's unacceptable, right? Brands use ODM services because they help shorten development time and also significantly reduce the cost of making a phone. And ODMs create devices based on the manufacturer's requirements. Brands still have plenty of creativity options when it comes to design, materials, and different components. On the other hand, the tech community thinks that using an ODM means that Carl Pei has been sleeping in his bed for the past six months, and then one day he got a call from the ODM and they're like, you know what? Come pick up your phone, it's ready. Only the tech community can turn such a useful service sometimes into a bad word. The third argument against Phone One is that the Glyph interface is a useless gimmick. Now maybe it is a gimmick for some, and maybe it isn't. I can see it being useful for viewing notifications or even for some accessibility use cases. At worst, it's a unique differentiating aspect that makes the Phone One pretty unique. And it also adds a bit of fun into the design process. Is that really a bad thing though? I just want to know when did the tech community become the phone police? Not everything that your limited imagination classifies as useless is useless. And please stop using the word gimmick for everything that's new or mildly interesting. No wonder most phones look the same these days. 
And the final point is that the device has been overhyped so much, it's never gonna be able to meet its own expectations. Therefore, it's a bad product. Now, I don't personally like the way Carl Pei overhypes his brands. And I also think calling it an iPhone killer is a funny joke. However, his strategy has been incredibly effective. I, for one, would never be making this video if the brand hype wasn't real. And I also think that a tech startup wouldn't stand a chance at getting any media coverage without this hype. So I respect the hustle, and just because a product is overhyped doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Especially since it's not like the phone promised certain features that it didn't deliver. You can still hate the hype without letting it affect your judgment of the actual products. And this includes you too, tech reviewers. I believe some of you can come up with original ideas without parroting every single opinion that a bigger YouTuber comes up with. I do believe in you. Now the phone one might still flop really hard and it might even end up being a terrible product. I for one hope not. I want to see them succeed and further develop on this concept and I hope that they get a fair treatment from the media. Nokia back in the day never did and neither did LG and neither is Sony or OnePlus today. And we definitely aren't better off without the first two and certainly won't be better off if the last two end up disappearing as well. Would just be a really good idea to stop with the blind hate and start appreciating the differences and having more options. You know, since you love tech and all. And I will end with this. The Nothing Phone One is a mid-range premium device that's focused on design and build quality, with components that are selected to offer an excellent, well-balanced experience, with a near stock-like Android interface and a focus on longevity and sustainability. And if that sounds like your average Nokia device in every segment, then well done, you've been paying attention. I've had a quick look at some of the reviews that this device is getting and I'm glad that the tech media seems to be getting the point of this phone. Maybe that means that they'll start finally understanding other types of phones too. Though I personally doubt it. If you want to see why I think innovation in smartphones is almost dead, check out my video. Or check out my nostalgia coverage of the Nokia E7, which is a brilliant piece of hardware. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.